Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopeful elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian, and Haitians. Got to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rika, Quraysh. The Most High, the Heavenly Father, his name is Yahweh, not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not Ahaya, not God, not Elohim. It's Yahweh. His only begotten son name is Yahweh Shah, not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapis Christus, not Yeshua. It's Yahweh Shah. So we gotta give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. Bahashim, Rika, Quraysh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well. And a sincere salutation to all the arguing, pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the hopeful elect. And shalom to the Aqwa who are listening and learning. The few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from the GMS Orlando camp, coming at you another lesson in true fact, faith, and edification, another daily edification. Lord's willing, it's be edifying. And this is Babylon the Great <laughs> and its allies are beginning to separate the we are at the when you read daniel chapter 2 all right around verse um 40 through like 42 it tell you that they will they will mingle with the seeds some men but they will not cleave and who is this the so-called white man the edomites they are mingling with the seeds of men with the other nation but they will not cleave and now you're beginning you're starting to see the separation of EU, NATO, and North America, Babylon the Great. Lord willing, be edifying. This is Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Verse 13 reads, O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine eye, thine end is come, and the measure of thy countenance. Uh, Salaki, in the measure of thy covetousness, okay, because you done covered the whole earth, man. Does it tell you in um, <clears throat> this is uh, Michael 2 and 2, it reads, and they cover fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away, so they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. Why do they do this? Because they are the devil. Habakkuk 2 and 5 reads, 
Yeah, also because he transgressed by wine, his philosophies, his policies, his legislation, his democracies, his way of life. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied. That's why they take everything, because they cannot be satisfied, man. They cannot be filled, no matter what it is. But gather unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Okay? Verse 8 says, Because thou hast spoiled many nations. That's why the nations are pissed off, because you spoiled these, these nations. And took all the, taking their resources, everything. Okay? He, they go, he go around the world and destroy. First Peter 5 and 8. Right? He walked about as a roaring lion, seeking all that he may devour. Habakkuk 2 and 8, because he, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of thy people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land and of cities and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house that he may set his nest on high. The scripture comes to tell you about those that exalt themselves, right? That's the eagle. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thine house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. When you go to verse um, um, verse 15, it say, Habakkuk 2 and 15, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink that put us the that put thy bottle to him and maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. You see? So, Esau Edom, the so called white man, went around the world and he put the bottle to these other nations and made them drink. That's why I read Jeremiah 51 and 7. Let's read again. It reads Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. I just read this in Habakkuk. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad, man. Let's get this one. Revelation 11 and 18. It reads. And the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. That thou. That, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servant, the prophets, the elect, and to the saints. The elect and them that fear thy name, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Who destroying the earth? Babylon the Great. Let's get it. Jeremiah 51 25 reads Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith Yahweh, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. Yeah, man. Oh, they pissed off, man. Okay. A Chinese foreign ministry, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman pushed an unproved claim on social media that what? That what? Here it come. Again. It might be the U.S. Army who brought the epidemic to Wuhan. Be transparent. Make public your data, the U.S. owe us an explanation. Who has the patent for the coronavirus? North America, Babylon the Great, Bill Gates, and others, man. Okay, the elites, man. From the world headquarters of RT America in our nation's capital, this is the news with Rick Sanchez. And, hello again. and let me say this. China pissed off with North America. Well, guess what? You joined to these devils, 
Russia is not joining North America through the UN, okay? Through EU and NATO. Russia ain't joined to that, man. Check this out. Second Ezra 15 and um, 46. It reads, And thou, Asia, that are partaker of the hope of Babylon, and art the glory of her person, Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Like unto who? Babylon the Great. And hast decked thy daughters in whoredom, that they may please and glory in thy, in thy lovers, which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works. Hated by who? The Most High Yahweh. It says, Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions, therefore say of Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence, to waste the houses with destruction and death. And the glory of the people and the glory of the power shall be dried up as flour. Hey, Wuhan, China is dried up, man. When the heat shall arise that is sent over thee, thou shalt be weakened as a poor woman with stripes and as one chastened. Chased, chastised with wounds, so that the mighty and lover shall not be able to receive thee. And North America don't care about you. You, you, uh, uh, you Asian, China. They don't care about you, man. Okay, they don't care about you, man. Everybody, I'm Rick Sanchez. The carnage continues on Wall Street today. Some calling it one of the worst days ever for Wall Street. While the fear escalates regarding the spread of the coronavirus, and that pretty much, pretty much sets the table for what is going on right now in our world. My job, our job here on the news with Rick Sanchez here on RT America is to try and, uh, as much as possible, put everything in perspective for you by trying to break it into its uh, proper parts. First, what's actually happening on the ground? Things that affect uh, how we actually live our lives. For example, uh, sports in America as of right now, are, uh, for the most part, shut down. College basketball tournaments, baseball, hockey, soccer, pretty much all of them. Events, entertainment, massive cancellation. Broadway, for example, an American institution, right? Shut down. Travel from Europe, stopped. School after school and colleges and universities are telling their students, stay away, we don't want you on campus. Instead, we're going to do the coursework somehow online. We're going to try and drill down on all of this for you, but let me update you on the second part of this story, which is the economy. Stock market had to be halted today because by 11 a.m. this morning, the Dow is crashing. Crashing. The uh, Dow finished down about 2,350 points. It recovered for a while when, the, get this, when the Fed suddenly announced that it would provide banks with money to remain liquid, right? But even that was short-lived, which really makes us wonder, right? Stay with me here. So the Fed announced that it's going to supply banks with trillions of dollars. Now, you see that right there? See that, 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 that little hop right there on that graph? So they give them trillions of dollars, and what happens? The Dow comes charging back up. And then, about a half hour later, it goes back down again. Right there. See that? It goes back down again. But then it starts going back down another thousand points in the other direction. And by the way, the money that the Fed is making available that, that caused that blip right there for that momentary blip, the money is astronomical. Listen to this. I want to take you through this. I want you to understand what these numbers are. So the Fed is putting uh, a half trillion dollars in today a half trillion dollars with a t okay they're going to put another half trillion dollars in tomorrow and then the next day they're going to put another half trillion dollars in and then they're going to continue putting in more than a trillion dollars for a month every month for the foreseeable future oh and tonight we're hearing that interest rates are going to be lowered again probably within days Add to that the stimulus package of somewhere between 70 to 80, who knows, maybe 
you know, $90 billion by the time Congress and the Democrats and the White House are done that the president and Congress are now working on. And what you have is a, a giant government Bigfoot of the U.S. economy. Not judging, just saying, right? Our government and the Fed are essentially throwing the kitchen sink at the capitulation that we're experiencing from the economic standpoint. But so far, the problem is it's not working so far, okay? That doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means that we're, I guess, not there yet. And then there's a the concern that in the process of attacking the problem, we don't run out of bullets. Because then what? You know, like we've been saying, if you use up all your tools and you got no tools, how do you put it out? How do you put out the fire? We have so much to get to on this show, and we're going to do it right here on the News with Rick Sanchez, where, as you know, we believe it's just time to do news again. Okay, let's get to the questions, shall we? The questions we think you'll be asking tomorrow. Why is the market not responding so far to the help that the Fed gave it today? All that money, all this stuff, it's not working. What's it like inside the quarantine zone in uh, New York, surrounded by the National Guard? And how will the world of sports be affected by bans on public gatherings? This is nuts, right? All right, let's... Uh, Begin tonight at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's just a block from this desk right here, and it's uh, where the president tried to calm fears last night, but unfortunately didn't seem to work. Tonight he's also being asked to calm fears about his own health, did you know? Because he's now been in the presence of at least two people who have tested positive for the coronavirus. The latest news is a member of the Brazilian government who met with Mr. Trump and Vice President Pence just this past weekend. He, that guy, he's tested positive for the coronavirus. The White House says the situation is being assessed. So we got Peter Oliver. He's going to be reporting on the news outbreaks from, uh, on the new outbreaks, I should say, from Germany, Berlin. Trinity Chavez, our correspondent in New York, is in New Rochelle to bring us the latest under that, on that city that's under quarantine right now. But we're going to begin with Farron Franzak. She's joining us tonight from Reagan uh, National Airport right here in Washington, D.C. Well, saying that airports across Europe are having a pretty busy day today is an understatement as American citizens are scrambling to get back before that countdown ends at midnight Friday evening where that travel ban is going to go in place. You have Americans trying to get home. You also have some Europeans that had scheduled vacations in the United States that are either trying to reschedule those vacations or canceling them altogether. As the president said this on Wednesday evening. Take a listen. Older Americans should also avoid non-essential travel in crowded areas. My administration is coordinating directly with communities with the largest outbreaks, and we have issued guidance on school closures, social distancing, and reducing large gatherings. Now, Trump made that announcement just hours after the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. Again, that travel ban goes into effect midnight Friday, and all flights from Europe will be canceled except from the United Kingdom and Ireland. Now, Homeland Security officials did later clarify that the new restrictions would apply only to the most foreign nationals who have been in Europe's passport-free travel zone at any point for 14 days prior to their arrival in the United States. Now, following the announcement, the European Union actually lashed out at President Trump, saying that the illness does not respect borders. Now, again, that travel ban goes into effect Friday at midnight, and airlines are really trying to help and working diligently to get those Americans home before that deadline. But they are telling passengers, as corny as it sounds, to count your patience. For the News with Rick Sanchez, I'm Farron Franza. With the world split over the best way to try and deal with the coronavirus that continues to spread, what we're seeing is a spat emerging between EU leadership and the US President Donald Trump. This is after the president announced a, well, a ban on travel for foreign nationals from within the Schengen zone in Europe to the United States, apparently in a move he made, well, without consulting his allies on this side of the Atlantic. The president <laughs> says it was You see, this is what, hey, this is another thing to set off the other nations, man. 
Hey, they don't approve it. Hey, what you doing, huh? Hey, they like, what you doing, man? We didn't come to agreement on this. If we supposed to be um, all joined together as what? Um, a confederacy, right? They supposed to be joined together as a confederacy, man. So they supposed to all, uh, what is it? Have counsel together, man. But they ain't doing that. Why? Because Babylon the Great, the harlot, that sits on the scarlet color beast, man. Okay? The harlot <laughs> that, hey, that's riding the beast is North America, man. The beast being EU and NATO. Hey, Trump making decisions for all the other nations, man. And they ain't with this. This is another way that's going to piss them off, man. Necessary to keep new cases from entering our shores. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. The coronavirus is a global crisis, not limited to any continent, and it requires cooperation rather than unilateral action. The European Union disapproves of the fact that the US decision to impose a travel ban was taken unilaterally and without consultation. What well, Donald Trump's you ban see? comes after the World Health Organization declared coronavirus to be a global pandemic. But the more you look at it, the more it seems, well, pretty arbitrary, really. Those nations that it involves are the 26 uh, that make up the Schengen zone. Um, it doesn't include the United Kingdom. It doesn't include Ireland. There's absolutely nothing to stop somebody, say, flying from here where I am in Berlin over to London and then on to the United States. <laughs> a very busy day here in New Rochelle, which is considered to be the epicenter of the outbreak of the coronavirus here in New York. The National Guard touching down today. They've been handing out bags of food all day. As you can see behind me, they recently just got another shipment, and a line is already starting to form within minutes of the delivery. All hey, don't this remind you of um the last purge when everybody was lined up to get that chip because they was giving people money if they partake in the purge? Hey, you can't make this up, man. Okay? Hey, they already been pushing it in the movies. Hey, they lining up for the food. Hey, guess what? They're going to line up for that chip, man. They're going to line right up for the chip, too. You see? Hey, man, this is all playing out one step at a time, man. Yahweh is a master chess player, man. Through his son, Yahweh Shah. Underway. Today, state officials taking drastic measures. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo deploying the National Guard to the nation's first containment zone in New Rochelle. Troops handing out supplies to residents at distribution centers. This, as the World Health Organization declares the outbreak a global pandemic. The numbers have been going up. The numbers continue to go up. The numbers are going up unabated. Uh, and we do need a special uh, public health strategy for New Rochelle. Schools, places of worship, and large gathering areas. Yeah, so they need a public health strategy, man. Hey, uh, order out of chaos, man. Okay? Um, uh, problem, reaction, solution. Agenda 21, man. They got, and who's gonna fall for this? Two thirds of Israel. You two third Negro to Native Americans is falling for the trick bag, man. Areas within the containment zone now closed for two weeks in an effort to slow the rapidly spreading virus. And while people will be able to enter and leave the area, according to some residents, many are staying home. It's very quiet, very kind, isolated. I spend most of the day at home. Cancel all uh, my lessons, my activities. I'm afraid to be infected, and I don't want to infect anybody else, just in case. People are really afraid to go to the supermarket. They're afraid to uh, go to the cleaner. They wear gloves to make transactions. Even hey, and I went, I went to go get some distilled water because I use distilled water for my um food grade peroxide, and um all the tissue gone, man. And I usually, I go get like um, this big bulk of tissue. I think it's like 48 in the pack. I get like a big pack. It's like $17, $20 or so, like 48 rolls in it. So my tissue lasts me a while. Man, when I went in there to get the steel water, all the tissue was gone. 
None of the paper towels, all the paper towels still on the aisle. All the aisles of t all the whole aisle for tissue is gone in the Walmart, man. Okay? And it's a big panic over tissue, man. I sent my husband to the post office and I said, wear gloves when you hand in the package and get the receipt. So um, it's there's a lot of anxiety and we are often afraid to go out. This is, this is a first. Uh, I've never experienced anything like this. This as the number of cases in the U.S. rapidly climb. Health officials are warning that the virus will keep spreading and matters will only get worse. So I can say we will see more cases and things will get worse than they are right now. How much worse we'll get will depend on our ability to do two things, to contain the influx of in people who are infected coming from the outside and the ability to contain and mitigate within our own country. Bottom line, it's going to get worse. Meantime, hospitals around the country now setting up testing sites for potential future testing. And here in New York, where there's more than 200 cases, officials are taking matters into their own hands. The state now looking to boost virus testing with private labs. We're trying to develop as much good quality testing uh, capacity as fast as we can develop it. We're hey, go watch the Resident Evil movie, man. The first one and the other two, the other three. Hey, man, we are living in this movie, man, of um Resident Evil, man. Okay? We living in it, man. This is Walking Dead, man. It's going to get, you heard what he said, it's going to get worse, man. Okay? Why? Because Yahweh said so, man. This is his doing. What he's doing is getting rid of the wicked, man. Okay? He's getting rid of the wicked. Those that don't want to seek Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, he's getting rid of them, man. And he's using who? His sword to do so. Starting to ramp up today uh, to the coronavirus testing. Uh, we've been able to uh, get the emergency use authorization uh, to move forward uh, with uh, a, an analytic platform. State officials now postponing the St. Patrick's Day Parade, an event that attracts one to two million visitors every year. Right now, it's unclear whether or not these kind of supplies will continue to be handed out to the residents here in New Rochelle for the whole duration of the containment period. However, it is only day one, and this is the very first containment zone that has been established in the country. And while that is the case, it's likely we will see more of these areas popping up throughout the country in the coming days and weeks. Reporting in New Rochelle, in New York, Trinity Chavez, RT. All right. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And what he's sending is curses, man. Plagues. Salakia. Plagues he's sending. Plagues. Jeremiah 28 and 8. You bring it out. Hey, it is a broken record in itself, man. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence, man. All right, three very important reports to give us a perspective of what's going on with this story. Let me bring in now Dr. Uh, Azira, Azita Shirazi. Uh, she's a California medical specialist to bring us up to date on what's going on with this situation. Let me ask you this question. It seems like what the government is doing as a result of its public policy, public health policies, it's, it's freaking a lot of people out. It's freaking the market out. People are confused. People don't know what to do. Everybody freaked it, it, out. Is it a necessary evil for the government to do what it's doing, uh, regardless of what the effect might be on our society? There's definitely a level of panic, and I think the main uncertainty is not is really how big this is going to get, but how fast. Um, some recent reports have shown that the highest viral shedding actually occurs early on. Mm. So it may be during a time period where somebody has the virus, but they're not really that symptomatic. They may be going on about their daily activity. So I think the crucial um, practice here is that we 
practice uh, containment and we have preventative measures and we practice social distancing. And I think there is that sense of urgency because the rate at which this virus spreads is quite important. And if we're going to save inundating our healthcare system with a lot of sick people, we really do have to stress these preventative measures, not to make people panic because probably 80% of people that will get this virus will have very mild symptoms. The problem is these patients or these people that will then pass it on to those that will not have mild symptoms. So it's almost a, it's the cumulative, the cumulative effect of what this disease That's can right. do from carrier to carrier. The mortality rate is now something like 1.5%. That's not very high, right? Although it's higher than the flu. What do you say to all it's the people? It's actually I'm sure... closer to three percent. What's that? Yeah, it's it's actually closer to three percent, whereas the flu is mm. zero point one percent. So the mortality is higher, mainly because this virus tends to go to the lungs um, in in those that again may be more susceptible. And I think the 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 reason there is a lot of public messaging out there is to have people take responsibility and put certain things on hold, cancel events, and practice that social distancing and, pra and practice preventative measures. Really, we really but, have to. But, but that, that's stop that's what I want to get to with you. That, that's what I'm trying to get at. These things that you're describing, yes. they're very extreme. Is it is it worth creating that extreme environment for the sake of being able to handle this, given the low percentage of mortality? Fair question. Yeah. There, very fair. And, you know, it's not that we're being extreme. I think we are just voicing concern and, and letting people know that we all have a social obligation mm. to prevent this from spreading so quickly. And people shouldn't be panicked or stressed or, you know, any of those things. But it's important for all of us to take collective action, meaning yeah. we're all in this together. Don't panic. Don't stress. You're not going to die from this virus. Yeah. But what we want to do is as a community, as a country, to prevent it from spreading so quickly, yeah. which is why a lot of these events are canceled and and so forth. I, not because we think people are going to die, but because we want to spread. We want to stop the spread and I, practice preventative measures. I get it. And you've made your case well, doctor. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Azita Shirazi, uh, joining us from uh, California. We'll hopefully talk to you again. So let's talk now about these, I guess, extreme measures, some are calling them, that are taking place. Because this story is moving so fast, we've decided to dedicate a segment every single night to try and keep you up to date on what's uh, going on. Let's go now to our global coronavirus update desk. Michelle Greenstein is manning it for us. Start us off, Michelle. Sure thing, Rick. I've got several stories for you. The first one is coming to us from Los Angeles. Disneyland is closed for the rest of the month. So is another theme park, California Adventureland. And in fact, they have to do this since California is recommending that all gatherings of 250 people or more be canceled across the entire state. Now, also in Los Angeles, new guidelines about eating at restaurants. The first one is, if you're a part of one of those vulnerable groups, like the previous guest just mentioned, if you're pregnant, if you're elderly, if you have these underlying health issues, especially in the lungs, just stay at home. Please avoid eating at restaurants entirely, and please avoid going to any public spaces. The second guideline is that from now on, all self-serve buffets will now have servers serving you food, so uh, in order to kind of avoid cross-contamination between people touching their own food. Okay, that's Los Angeles. Now let's talk about New York. Broadway is going dark. All Broadway theaters are shutting their doors until April 13th or until further notice. And this just minutes ago, the Tribeca Film Festival is also postponed. In fact, the entire state of New York, Rick, has banned gatherings of over 500 people. The exceptions are schools, hospitals, nursing homes, and mass transit. In fact, New York City just declared a state of emergency this afternoon, and so has the most populous county in Florida. In a statement, the mayor of Miami, Dade, said that although they, quote, do not have community spread at this time, the county wants to take preemptive steps to keep it that way. By the way, their public schools are going to stay open. But let's talk about some of the places in the U.S. where school will be closed. Maryland, Connecticut, Washington State, 
New York, and Tennessee. And by the way, Rick, this applies all the way from kindergarten through 12th grade. So this means hundreds of thousands wow. of students will be out of school in the coming days. And one more point while we're on the United States. Senator Lindsey Graham has decided to quarantine himself. He's the ninth member of Congress to take a step like this. In fact, another newsmaker, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, is self-isolating as well. So that's the United States. Let's move on to the global stage. Mm. In Italy, they're literally shutting down all restaurants and bars. In fact, I've got some video that I'm going to show you. This is what the streets of Rome look like at this moment, completely empty. In fact, Rick, some businesses, especially small businesses, are so stressed and angry about this that they're asking for tax relief from the Italian government. They say the government needs to step up and help them out because they're going to be losing so much money and being closed for just a few weeks could really be a financial death sentences for some of wow. these uh, smaller businesses. By the way, this comes after 196 people in in Italy died in just 24 hours. That's according to Italy's civil protection. That's agency. cold, man. Now, in Greece, That's they cold. just made an announcement that Lower all cold, theaters, man. playgrounds, gyms, courts are officially closed, all of these kind of public event spaces. And in Iran, an advisor to Iran's supreme leader has actually just tested positive for COVID-19. Finally, in China, Beijing officials have ordered anyone entering the country to confine themselves at home for 14 days effective immediately. And to close it out before I send it back to you, it looks like NASCAR will go on as scheduled, but the upcoming races in Atlanta and Miami will have no fans at the track. Hey, 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 you wonder why NASCAR gonna continue? Hey, these devils started NASCAR from running from running moonshine, man. Okay, hey, that, that was one of their number one um uh, um um currencies, man. I mean um uh, um what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they financial gains, man. What's through running um moonshine, man? Look up, man. Okay, hey, they started NASCAR from running moonshine, man. That's facts. Of course they wouldn't shut that down. Hey, that's world that's the world's favorite pastime, man. NASCAR, man. <laughs> hey, these devils is a trip, man. Michelle, thanks so much. Boy, that's a lot of stuff going on. I'm glad we have you there. Now, the Dow was down about eight percent today. One of the worst market collapses in Wall Street's history, and nobody seems to know where the bottom is. The Fed and the president tried to calm fears, but it didn't work. Joining us now, Jeff Small. He's the president of Arbor Financial. What do you make of the uh, of what the Fed did and the tepid reaction to what the Fed did? Well, the Fed can't control the decrease in supply chains that might occur, the lack of consumerism that's going to occur from economic mobility being severely stifled just from the lack of movement in our in our populace and our economy. There's going to be significant decreases. And, and technically, Rick, the stock market might be overpriced right now mm. as this transitions into really bad top line and bottom line numbers. Overpriced? The stock market? Oh, given the losses, 20% across the board? Why would you say that? That's interesting. Now, Trump just declared a national emergency, man. A national emergency for all of North America, man. Hey. They finna bring in martial law. And what you Jace gonna do out there in the world, man, when they do this here, man? Cause it's coming, man. What's going on in Italy and Rome? Okay, it's coming, man. What's going on in China? What's going on in Japan? It's coming to North America on a greater scale, man. Okay, the Lord is saving the best for last, man. Interesting. Tell me more. Well, it's 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 26 percent. We've hit from the peak till today, 26 percent, the fastest decline in a little bit under three weeks that we've ever had in history. The second fastest decline was 1929, where it took 28 days to get to this point. Yeah. But I say that for a reason. I say that because when we when we look at what's happening with the fact that people aren't going to be spending money, they're staying home. We're basically quarantining people already, and it's a great thing for us to do that. We should use social mitigation tactics. But there's going to be a loss of momentum in the economy. The amount of money that's circulating in motion that people are spending is getting ready to fall off the cliff. The lack of travel, hospitality, and leisurely globally is going to put a 5% hit in GDP, and there's no doubt we're going to experience some type of a recession. The best case scenario is we go through two quarters of pain, 
the next two quarters, and we start to recover as we start to contend with the virus, mm. and rates of infection begin to drop. If we can have that effect, that's the best case scenario to get us out of this. Yeah. But if tens of millions of people end up capturing this, this might take 18 to 24 months to work its way through. Wow. You know what? You're good. 33 years. It's a Wall Street Records worst day since 1987 as Dow fell 2,300 points, man. 33 years, man, since they've been this low, man. Hey, it's over, man. Babylon the Great is finna sit on the ground, man, and be yes, made you desolate. Really, uh, you really have your, uh, your finger on the pulse of this situation. We're glad we had you on. Can't wait to get you back and have this discussion once again as this situation uh, continues to develop. Thank you so much. Let's do this now. Uh, tonight, the legal team for whistleblower Chelsea Manning has confirmed that she tried to kill herself in prison. Now, remember, we told you this last night. Now it's official. She's been there for more than a year, raises questions about her incarceration in general. But there's now a very dramatic development on this story. Last after, Just this afternoon, uh, a judge ruled that Manning should be released from her jail cell. Mm. Here's RT's Rachel Blevins. The sheriff's office in Alexandria, Virginia, where Manning has been held for the last year, confirmed that she was transferred to a hospital on Wednesday, but they did not give any details about the circumstances surrounding her current state. Manning was said to appear in court on Friday in a petition seeking to drop the current contempt sanctions against her. She has been in jail since May after she refused to testify before a secret grand jury in a case involving WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange in March 2019. Psalm 73 and 5. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. In a statement, Manning's legal team said the hearing is expected to go on as planned on Friday. And they noted that in spite of those sanctions, which have so far included over a year of so-called coercive incarceration and nearly a million dollars in threatened fines, she remains unwavering in her refusal to participate in a secret grand jury process that she sees as highly susceptible to abuse. Come on, fire. Manning became known to the public back in 2010 when she released the largest trove of state secrets in U.S. history, consisting of more than 250,000 classified cables. Among them was... Hey, Psalm 64, man. They should make their own tone to fall upon themselves, man. Horrific footage that showed the U.S. Apache helicopters gunning down innocent civilians and journalists in Iraq. After she was sentenced to 35 years behind bars for violating the Espionage Act in 2013, Manning's sentence was then commuted by President Obama in 2017. But her latest fight with the law involves the U.S. government's case against WikiLeaks and its ongoing attempt to force Julian Assange to be extradited to the U.S., where he faces life in prison. In addition to protesting the existence of a secret grand jury, Manning said in a statement that the questions she was asked pertain to her disclosures of information to the public in 2010, all of which she answered in extensive testimony during her court-martial in 2013. The news of Manning's suicide attempt comes months after a top United Nations official warned that her current treatment amounts to torture, calling it an open-ended, progressively severe measure of coercion, fulfilling all the constitutive elements of torture or other cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment. While the state of the whistleblower's health is now in the spotlight, Chelsea Manning has repeatedly said that she would rather risk grave harm to herself than to ever betray her principles. Reporting in Washington, Rachel Blevins, RT. In these times of political differences, what's the only thing that brings us together as a nation? What's the thing that always brings Americans together? You know what it is, right? Sports. It's the only time you see people of different stripes, different politics, different nationalities, different races together, hugging, high-fiving each other. Say goodbye to that now for a while, too. Massive changes, cancellations, affecting almost every single sport in the good old USA and beyond, by the way. RT uh, sports producer Regina Hamm is here to take us through it, and I understand the list is getting longer as we speak. <laughs> You know, it's probably longer than giraffe at this point, Rick. You have 19 basketball conference tournaments canceled. NCAA men's and women's canceled. MLB, NHL, you name it, the season is postponed until we figure out what is going on here. And it's absolutely ridiculous. You have fans who are saying, you know, this is good. Let's... Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah. 
That's what's going on, man. <laughs> Let's keep everybody safe. It's a public health thing. But you know what? It's it's just tough. We're going to be in a panic mode. And look at look at all yeah, these. PGA you Tour, MLS, six NBA. Weeks of tennis. Yeah. I mean, people are going to be wondering at home, what, what HBO show should I watch next? You know, yesterday I was watching my Gophers play uh, Northwestern, and I was all excited to watch them play Iowa today. Yeah, it's better be watching end time movies. <laughs> you better be watching Outbreak and a Contagion. And containment, and the road, and Bushwick, and Resident Evil, and The Walking Dead. You better, uh, I Am Legend. You better, you better be watching these end time movies and see what's popping off, man. First they announced no fans, then they said no game. Yeah, it's it's almost like they were afraid to just do it off the bat because they didn't want to make people angry. But you know what? It's it's a public health issue. We got to be aware of that, even if we don't want to be. Yeah. And realize, you know what? Two, three weeks. They're going to reevaluate. Most leagues have a plan to reevaluate in a month anyway. But I'm hearing the Masters is now thinking about either canceling or just not allowing anybody on the grounds. That is Can you the plan imagine? The PGA. I yeah. mean, for now, it's just, it's just souls. Hey, so Lord willing, this is edifying. Got to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rika, Quarash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well. In a sincere salutation to all the occupants, pushing this truth and believing this truth. Throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole flick. Shalom to the Aqwaf who are listening and learning, and a few sisters who are listening and learning. A hey, Lord will edify, and to next time I say Shalom. And the title of this lesson, The Beginning of Sorrows and Great Death. Shalom.